Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Claudia Monicelli with another episode of Multiple Voices. My Multiple Voices podcast, true to its name, includes different series. For example, we have the Voices of Love, where we discuss relationships, the voice of empowerment, the voice of laughter and play, the voice of pleasure, and the magical voice of archetypes and how they change the way we live. But we also have the voice of memory that includes everything from history to discussions of past life regression. There's also writing voices where we interview both seasoned writers and authors who have just started getting their feet wet with writing and we learn what can work for you as potential writers. Our series called Voice of the Spirit discusses different forms of spirituality and religion. And then Channeling Voices is a series that covers what happens when you channel, but is also extended to mediumship. Take a moment to review this podcast if you've enjoyed listening, and leave a hearty five stars. I'd appreciate it. Enjoy your listening. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with a guest who is a moneymaker in every sense of the word, literally speaking, he's a moneymaker. How does he describe himself, Tom? Antion, say hello to our guests. Hello, everybody. So to our guests, to our listeners. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're our guests, right? They're your, I'm your guest, too. Right. <laughs> We're all your guests. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me first tell you uh, uh, what he says about himself. He says that he's never had a job. He's a an internet multi-millionaire guy next door and the founder of the only and i'm going to have to put him to i have to put black on white the only licensed dedicated internet marking school in the country one two three those seven words <laughs> you're going to have to explain that okay and he's the subject of a hollywood documentary the title is the the american entrepreneur premiering in the spring of 2022 he owned at one time a practical joke company, a nightclub, and different other businesses with crazy stories. Now, I've, you know, the, the interesting part about Tom is he's got tons of stories. It is going to be my job to get those stories out of him. And I have to figure out how. But what I'm going to do, Tom, you're we're you're talking to me from Virginia. Southeastern Virginia, Virginia right. Beach. Virginia Beach. And the largest city in Virginia. Have you always <laughs> lived there? No, no. I came from a little two-horse town in western Pennsylvania oh. called called Claysville. It was oh. named after the great statesman Henry Clay. Uh-huh. And, and and he didn't really sleep there. His horse just took a dump there on the way through, and that was good <laughs> enough for us. <laughs> so five five hundred people. Five hundred people wow. currently is the population. That's what it so was. So then I, you moved up and got to the city. I, I went you... to the big city. I moved. Uh, well, I went through West by God, Virginia. I went on oh, West... a major. I yeah, you got to say by God if you say West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, I heard one of your guests was from the uh, University of California at Berkeley. Yeah. And, uh, we went out to play them, a bunch yeah. of hicks from West Virginia going out <laughs> to there. And we get no respect, of course. Of course we were the, no, we were the West Virginia Mountaineers. Oh. And on the scoreboard, at the University of California at Berkeley, it said the Western Virginia coal miners. Oh. Of the West and then we beat them. And then oh, oh. now that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Ooh, that's really nice. So I well, lived in a, a, a two a horse town. Yeah. And uh, we lived in the suburbs. So I was uh-huh. clear in the sticks. There was nobody to play with. I was the baby of six boys and uh, oh. uh, became very creative. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so so you came from a fairly big family. I mean, six children. I mean, that's a, a big family by even, yeah. you know, any standards, really. Yeah. And so where were you on the line? Were you the I was oldest? the baby. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you were I was the baby. The baby baby oh, of six boys. Yep. And wow. Uh, um, what's interesting was, is my dad was married to my mother for 57 years. Uh huh. But the the cool part is, is he was married to another lady for 20 years. I mean, he well, was how married. Old? <laughs> he, he got around this man. <laughs> yeah, he he was married for 77 years. And I, I haven't made it 77 minutes with anybody. 
<laughs> yeah, he died at 94. You're basically sitting here talking to him because he pretty much molded my whole entrepreneurial experience and everything, but except for the part of getting married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's see. Okay. So, so little Tim, little Tom, sorry, Tom, yeah, yeah. grows. Tiny and Tom, yeah. <laughs> Tiny Tom grows. But you eventually get to high school, right? What kind of Tom was in high school? What was the high school like for you? Well, there was quite a journey to get to high school because I was um, I was very large. Uh, oh. I was 140 pounds in oh my first goodness. grade. In first uh, grade? First grade. And I was um, six feet, 220 pounds in, at 12 years old. Wow. And in fact, um, and I played midget football, they call it here in the States. What is that and midget football? That's the, the, the young, young, it's ah, regular, uh -huh. it's not soccer kind of, it's uh -huh. regular uh -huh. American football, but it's little kids. Yeah. And the average kid was 60 pounds and I was 220. Oh my goodness. And, and so after I got done playing, they made the rules to uh, limit the 150 pounds <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> God, that's but, so you've you've come a long way well yeah and but i went on to be a fourth in uh, uh in the state in rest in heavyweight wrestling and i went to college on a major uh top 20 school at a, on a football scholarship so wow. so and then uh took off from there so so high school was good i was valedictorian uh ah. Which was uh, really good when you had like three people in your class, you know. So, <laughs> so told you we lived in the sticks. <laughs> okay. But uh, I, you know, they were thinking about homeschooling me, and I thought that's really good. I could be uh, president of the yeah right class. senior class. I could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't. How could they homeschool you? I mean, how, why would they homeschool you? you no, know? no. So I was valedictorian and I went to college on a football scholarship mm -hmm. and uh, I, I squeezed uh, four years of college into five. Ah. <laughs> so, oh, that's not a squeeze. That's a sort of a blow. <laughs> well, well, they uh, in in major college football, there's a thing called a red shirt. Uh -huh. And that's if you weren't quite developed uh enough yet to really play the big time they held you back a year like almost oh. in, in grade school if you can't uh -huh. read <laughs> <hold you back. laughs> oh. wow yeah. wow 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 so so at one point uh, you so you went to to college right and yep. do what yep. did you major in in college i uh i started in pre-dentistry and mm. i audited a why? class but why did I did it was you... just, I didn't know. I mean, <laughs> what, what kid knows what they're going to do nowadays? In right. fact, some, the guy that wrote in search of excellence said, don't worry if your kid doesn't know what they're going to do, of because course. it pro probably hasn't been invented yet. Yeah. Right. You know, the way things yeah. are going now. Yeah. So, um, so I try. I, I audited a, an oral hygiene class. It was me and 31 dental hygienists, all uh -huh. female. And I all said, female. this is cool. This is yeah. cool. <laughs> this is cool, but I just can't see myself cooped up in an office after being entrepreneurial and all this stuff. So, so I went into, uh, you had to pick a major. So I picked psychology, uh -huh. but from what I recall, this is a long time ago, they kicked me out because I was really, I really liked that, um, electric shock treatment on people oh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, uh, I was always taking business courses too and then before I graduated from college I owned five apartment buildings and a hotel uh -huh. with, so yeah. so let's say that you 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 had a way of you know throwing out a network um you were you sort of had you know, you when when you, you give the definition of thinking big or thinking out and outward in any case. Um, so when you talk about owning buildings or apartments, that's real estate, right? That's that was real estate. But that's yeah. investment. That was a form of inv investment for you. Well, I didn't have anything to invest. This was long before uh, no money down kind of stuff. So uh -huh. I was I remember vividly I was sitting in the in the the square that's called Sunnyside at the, at the university. And I'm reading a book by William Nickerson called mm -hmm. how I turned a thousand dollars into a million dollars in real estate. And I was uh -huh. looking at all the techniques. I said, I could do that, but I don't really have a thousand dollars. So I found a, an, an attorney, an older guy yeah. that owned a, a, a triplex in the city. What's and he a rented triplex? The, that's three units in one uh -huh. building. A duplex uh -huh. is two units right, in one. Right. Building. 
Um, and he owned it free and clear, which means the bank was not involved. He just okay. had already paid it off years okay. ago. Yeah. But he didn't want to take all the money from it because he'd have to pay what they call capital gains tax and yeah. pay a big uh, amount of money. Yeah. So he sold it to me for no money down and uh -huh. just took payments. Ah. And so I well, that was uh, kind of him. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was it was it worked out for both of us because yeah. he gave me a break and then right. he didn't have to pay all these taxes. Right. So uh, in those days, they rented per person for the students. And what, uh, so, so so every unit could hold up to what three, several students. Four? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so the attic was empty. And I thought I could uh, remodel this. And they were <laughs> yeah, they were uh, tearing the seats out of the wooden seats out of the old uh, Mountaineer field, the, yeah. the football stadium and yeah. replacing them with plastic. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I said, Hey, can I have some of them? And they said, Yeah, we're just going to take them to the dump. So I took them all. Yeah. Not all of them, there's 50,000 yeah. seats. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I went to Kmart, which is a big department store over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time, and got a $10 circular saw, ripped them down the middle and made two by fours out of them. Uh -huh. And I remodeled this attic and got three more kids in for another $125 each. Wow. So I got the income web is straight to the bottom line profit. Yeah. And then yeah. I was so successful with it. I did it again. I found another guy and another yeah. guy and another guy. And then uh, my biggest uh, break of all, uh, Claudia, and this is a, a really good lesson for, for folks, and it's to give before you get. Mm -hmm. And so I was charging more to the kids than I was paying in rent to my landlord. Oh, so, oh, oh, so, oh. So, so every time he would come over, uh, to work on the house, I'd say, Hey, Frank, can I help you? You teach me how to do this, but I'll help you put these gutters on or whatever. Right. And so did that. So at the end of the year, he comes to me and he says, um, Hey, Tom, I want to talk to you. And I said, Uh Oh, <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> you know? yeah. He says, I've been renting apartments to kids in this town for 25 years. Yeah. He said, not once ever, ever, has one of them asked to help me do anything, let alone want to learn uh, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He says, I own a hotel about 20 minutes from here in another town. Mm -hmm. I want you to have it. Have it? <laughs> well, have it meant that he said, this is, again, you got to know a little bit about real estate finance, but he says, I'll hold the second mortgage. Uh -huh. You just have to come up with the first mortgage uh -huh. and then you'll have no money down. I'll train you how to run it. Yeah. I want to retire and go to Florida. Right. So yeah. that's the first lesson. Give before you get. Second lesson is persistence. Uh huh. I went. I had to go to fifty different lending institutions because they were saying, "Okay, you're a little kid that's got a couple apartments, but this is a hotel. What are you trying to do?" Took yeah. fifty tries, and I finally landed the first mortgage. He held back the mortgage for the second mortgage. Yeah. I paid both of them off, and uh, I was making sixty five thousand dollars a year while I was in college in the seventies. And then I sold the whole thing to the city for several hundred thousand. So I made a half a million dollars on it from giving before I get and being persistent. Hey, look at you. You left me. Hello? Can't, uh-uh. Can't hear you. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. I can't hear you. Your your audio is gone. Yeah, you should be able I heard to that. hear me now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There okay. you go. <laughs> well, um, so so when how long was this from the first uh, purchase of the triplex to this other um other about two, about two years. Oh, so that was really, really fast. Yeah, because I was still in school. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's that's big time fast. So, so <laughs> you you have your engine revved up by now. You know, I, I this is what I'm seeing. So there's a lot of energy there. Whatever happened to all of those extra uh, hundred pounds, two hundred pounds? Did they go somewhere? You know, volatile like energy? Or, or you mean uh, you mean my weight? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, well, they, uh, uh, as soon as, you know, when you're in major college football, mm -hmm. your, your, your caloric intake is high, but your exercise is right. over the, the professional yeah. level, yeah. pretty much. Right. 
And so when I got out, I bought a nightclub and pizza yeah. shop. Uh -huh. and, and but all the exercise went away. But the caloric intake was still there, you know, so and I was eating <laughs> up all the pizza profits and everything else. So, so I ballooned up pretty big. And then um, uh, I've been up and down. The only thing that's ever been successful for me and a little controversial is the keto diet. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The other day, I think it was two days ago, it was National Keto Day. Do you believe that? Oh, was it? I didn't <laughs> realize that. No. Yeah, no, I, I but, actually put a post up and I didn't even think they had a keto day. <laughs> it was just amazing because yeah, um, but, but, but being Tom, a, an overeater my whole life. I know, but Tom, then, keto means you can't have any carbohydrates, right? Not any. I mean, oh. you have to limit them. And uh -huh. what was interesting was, uh, is that I, in the first three days, it was yeah. a little bit hard, but then all of my cravings quit. Uh -huh. Everything. Good, good, good. And good. I lost, uh, over the course of a year, I lost a hundred pounds. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's and great. so, so, and I, and now one thing is I, I've got pretty good genes. My, my, <laughs> I, my dad came from Syria on a cattle boat and oh, good uh, for him. And he um, gave me good genes because I went to have a physical yeah. and the, 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 phys, the, the doctor, and I joke around with people all the time. So they feel comfortable saying yeah. things to me. So he says, other than being a fat, butt, there's nothing I can't, I got people half your age falling apart. Yeah, I'm not yeah. on any kind of pills, yeah. nothing. I'm, yeah, I'm going to yeah. be 67 in July. Yeah. And uh, people think I'm 40. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, of course I act like a 12. So that yeah, kind of, no, I mean, uh, for those of <laughs> for our listeners, I have to say, you know, I have in front of me a person who does look at least 15 years old, younger than that age. I mean, you're my age, <laughs> you know, well, and I get the same thing. But but it, there's a lot of. Oh, I thought you were in your 30s. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm, do having, anything. I'm having you back on my show. <laughs> That's what I said. I'll do anything to get invited back. See? <laughs> Listen, so, so that means that um that was the way you started and you did take you did say that you'd had marketing courses and how much did that impact your business as you were making money what did I that directly help you in any way somewhat but yeah. i had been doing entrepreneurial gigs since i was 10 years old okay i've, okay. I've been in business formally 45 years okay but 10 years old i'm okay. doing I'm selling advertising mm -hmm. specialties door to door. I, I won the awards for selling encyclopedias. If anybody remembers. <laughs> oh God, I remember that. I used, I used to do that too. <laughs> the people here, the, some of the younger ones like, what, <laughs> what's the hard, so hard about selling a disc? I mean, <laughs> <Right>? or, <laughs> so uh, uh, I was uh, uh, always helping my dad with stuff. He was, uh, he was an entrepreneur, but then he was also an electrician. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he was, uh, he would bring home all this extra wire from the jobs. He was a foreman, a, yeah. a temporary, and I would strip the rubber off and take it in and get, you know, so much per yeah. pound. I mean, he's always doing something entrepreneurial. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's say that um, you have all of these, a lot, a lot of, in Italian, we say a lot of trains are leaving at the same time. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of things going on a parallel, right? Um, but you must have a business that is, you know, like your first child, something that you really, really love that uh, more than all of the other businesses. I'm in it. Yeah, right now, uh, because it's, um, you know, I, I've, I've had a nightclub. I've had a pizza shop. I was right. a freelance charter pilot. Yeah, I uh, you know, my podcast is called Screw the Commute because you can almost live two or three extra lives if you're not in traffic making somebody else rich all the time. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so when you it, say I'm in it, can you describe what in it is in what? Yes. Yeah, so uh, after the entertainment company, I got worldwide publicity for doing all the crazy stuff in our entertainment company. Uh -huh. And it led to a professional speaking career. Oh, okay. So I've done 3000 speeches in 12 countries. And, uh, uh, and that was prior to the internet coming along. Yeah. So in 1990, and you know, all of us would try to sell tapes and stuff uh, yeah. in our yeah. books and things like that. Uh, but you know, it was hard enough selling them across the street, let alone around the world from yeah. your desktop. So when the internet right. came along in 1994, the commercial internet, right? I said, I'm going to figure this out. I mean, so, <laughs> so I figured this out and, uh, 
was four years later, I was a multimillionaire yeah. uh, because I could sell uh, a lot of times I just sell electrons, you know, I'm just selling <laughs> digital stuff. I'm selling yeah. eBooks and yeah, I have one yeah. eBook that I wrote in four hours and it's hard to tell a PhD this, but I wrote it four <laughs> hours. And, you know, you probably know. spent four years on your no. thesis. Or no, something. no, 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 no. <laughs> It's, it's, you know, you can, it, it, writing is a gift, right? It's writing, it's like a musician. And when you have, a, a, when you love to write, you just have to write down what you have to say. That's it, period. Well, if, period. You're, if writing is like a musician, I, I'm, I'm good at very simple songs. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, and happy birthday. But the, the thing I wrote in four hours, I was at a layover in McCarran Airport in Las mm -hmm. Vegas, yeah. and I wrote it. It's brought in, as of this morning, $3.68 million. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the, a, was this self-published? How did you, or you have a everything is company? Well, no, I've had major, major published uh, books, and mm -hmm. they're the biggest pain in the neck. Nick, and the I know, it is, it is. Of all, I mean, mm -hmm. they nickled, I mean, they gave me a good advance, but nowadays you can't get a good advance unless you're yeah. a big celebrity. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they're all self-published and many are ebooks now. Mm -hmm. And now I'm starting to make uh, audible. Uh, I just finished this weekend. Audio books. Uh, yeah. uh, audio yeah. books. Uh, I've had a lot of audio programs, but mm -hmm. this is uh, very highly structured to be on yeah. audible. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Tell me um, now there are several books I've seen, you know, on your website. Why don't you give us a, a, a couple of names of the titles of the books? Because of course, uh, in the description of this episode, I'm going to write down your website and there is everything. But um, what are the most, when you, this recent book you said now that's over, you know, sold over 3 million copies, what, um, or has made you that much money? Mm -hmm. What are the titles and what do they deal with? Well, everything that I do is nonfiction because uh -huh. I don't have the brain for fiction to make character development and plots and all yeah. that. So it's all nonfiction and business related. So uh -huh. that book was called how to pick a shopping cart system that makes you money. So it's all the things if you're going to have be online, what you need to know about the shopping cart system. And it's a free ebook. Now that's another concept. People say, boy, that's BS. How can you make $3 million on a free yeah, ebook? Right. Well, here's the method. It's very simple. Uh, in online, oh, Amazon actually kind of invented this is the affiliate stuff where right. you recommend something to uh, Amazon sells and they mm -hmm. give you money. Right. That's a basic affiliate thing. Mm -hmm. Well, a residual affiliate program is where I recommend it to you. And as long as you keep buying it every month or every year, I keep getting paid. Uh -huh. So I recommend it once and get paid forever as long as you stay in. Right. So this book teaches you how to do this, but you can't do it. Yeah. unless you buy the tool to do it, right. which is the shopping cart system that I uh, recommend. Yeah. And then uh, you keep it. Some people have had it 15, 16 years. You know, I, you know I'm so. listening to you, Tom. And I, <laughs> you know, I'm getting tired of, uh, I'm getting tired of just listening because, you know, I mean, if you were told, would be talking about dancing or, you know, having fun or, you know, doing cooking, and, except here, there's such, such a superstructure. You know, it's it's about structure. It's about systems. It's about the way systems work, which, of course, we have to have that, you know, bird's eye view. We have to know how things work at a bird's eye level. You know, um, I'm thinking it, it's tiresome to count all that money. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on your mindset. I get a big kick. My my nickname is the king of Kaching because oh. I have my. I have my email set to go ka-ching when the <laughs> orders come in yeah. and my students were here and they said, you're the king of ka-ching, aren't you? <laughs> okay. So they named me that. Uh, so, you know, but you talk about, if I was talking about dancing, yeah. you know, you'd be thrilled, but a good day for dancing for me is if I don't hurt anybody on the, <laughs> yeah. on the dance floor. Yeah. 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 So everybody's so, got their own thing. All right. you know? so, so before, um, in the, in the beginning of the talk, you mentioned, um, you learned early on that you have to give, give and to get back. Right. Right. And, um, so, so I'm in, interested in knowing, have you thought of a systematized way to, to give uh, money instead of help or, um, you know, chores or something like that? Ha has that yeah. come, become part of your 
most work? of mine, I mean, I have raised enormous amounts of money. Mm -hmm. So it's not technically me giving, taking a dollar and giving right. it to somebody. Right. For instance, I auctioned myself off. Uh, well, I was, I was at a big <laughs> event. Yeah. Wait, I was, wait a minute. It depends. How much weight? Know, how much did you weigh? <laughs> I know you're in Italy, but I'm not a gigolo. All right. I might be easy, but I can't be had. Easy. <laughs> oh, he, you heard him, ladies and gentlemen. You heard him. <laughs> Do we have to so, believe him? <laughs> so I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the back of this event that I'm supposed to speak at, and there's other speakers. And they, they have this uh, one guy that runs this charity for homeless children in mm -hmm. Las Vegas. Yeah. And the, the definition of a homeless child is one that moves every 30 days. On right. Average. Right. And their average is nine years old or eight years old. Something. Yeah. And, and I'm sitting here think, looking at my fat gut and thinking, oh, my God, these kids are starving. And uh, look at me and I can do something about this. So I got on stage and auctioned myself off and I raised <laughs> like seventy eight thousand dollars. Uh, <laughs> You know, me giving consultations. Okay, that's nothing. It was all remote. Don't get don't get all crazy. All remote. <laughs> I know you Italian people. Are <laughs> I don't want to get. If I ever go to Italy, I don't want to get my butt pitched all over. The place. <laughs> so, so, so uh, I, I ended up uh, feeding uh, two hundred and eighty-eight children for mm -hmm. a year. I mean, Good. there was a, there was a points that they had to teach the children how to hide the food because the older kids would steal it from them. Uh -huh. you know, so it was just uh -huh. a terrible situation. So that was that. Then I raised $24,000 for Bichon Rescue, which is a little white dog that looks like a poodle. Uh -huh. I actually have, I actually have a website that says I am not a poodle. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody says you're, oh, what a cute poodle you have, and the dogs are getting a complex over it because <laughs> I'm not a poodle, I'm a Bichon. Uh, so I raised tons of money for them, and I risk I got a rescue dog in there right this moment, you know. So, so these are the ways I kind of do because I'm very. Uh, I also have a TV show in development called Scam Brigade. I go ah, after bad people that right. rob people, and I'm very skeptical of a lot of charities because yes. mm -hmm. I give you a dollar and like a half a penny ends up getting to the homeless person. Right, you know, right. I don't like that. So no. I'm in control better when I'm doing the. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So, so I mean, I could get that. I could, I see mm -hmm. a person who I'm in control when I can do yeah. it. You know, I get that. Right. Um, do you have, um, have or have you ever um, collaborated with some university or institutions to give uh, talks or courses, seminars on money making or business or anything? A lot of mental institutions. <laughs> like <me>. <laughs> 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 they can't wait to get their hands on I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm looking at one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, They're right. all watching the television. You come walking in. Right. <laughs> Give your talk. They're still. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't. Uh, and, you know, I, I've, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm very pro education, but I'm yeah. very down on the uh, state of it. Uh, current. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, because uh, the kids are in massive debt. Yeah. They learning nothing yeah. but how to yeah. protest, and they yeah. and the, and you, they'll cry if they if somebody drops a feather in front of them. Yeah, you know they're they're not uh, getting skills. Yeah. and so yeah. I said, you know what, I'm going to start my own school. Well, that's what I was going to say. Have you thought <laughs> so about I that? I did. I did oh. twelve years ago. I started the oh. school. And what yeah. kind of school is it? It's a it's considered vocational, uh -huh. but it's. Uh, uh, the only licensed internet marketing school in the USA. Okay. All right. So yeah, now that's... when can you talk to us about that a yeah. little bit more in detail? Because this is interesting. It's well, it's interesting. It's everything you, you talk about is interesting, but this, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to be, I, I want to invite you again. So I have to be complimentary myself, but, but um, tell us a little bit of, about well, it. Uh, you yeah. know, as I said, I go after bad people because there's yeah. a lot of scammers out there and yeah. then, and mm -hmm. I, you know, it's, it's uh, like old Ronald Reagan said, trust, but verify. Yeah. Right. You know, so, you know, a lot of trusting people get really ripped off in this arena because mm -hmm. you can be, there was a New Yorker cartoon where there was a dog at a computer mm -hmm. and his buddy is a dog. And he says, Hey, you can't be on a computer selling stuff. You're a dog. He says, Hey, on a the computer, they can't tell if you're a dog. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, right. So yeah, anybody can get on here and, yeah. and say whatever and then take your money. See, so yeah. I, I went after those people. And so I thought, you know, in my regular business that to get my students and things, I need to set myself apart. So I went through three years of uh, scrutiny, financial background checks, everything mm -hmm. to get the license to have a for-profit school. Uh -huh. uh, because uh, uh, they really cracked down on for-profit schools yeah. because a lot of the owners were ripping the students yeah. off and yeah. getting yeah. rich and giving mm -hmm. them no education. So, um, so I, wait, hold I, on I, a second, Tom. Yeah. Um, let me interrupt you. So when you yeah. said it's a vocational school, what level are, is it an open age, open type of um, enrollment? Yeah, it's a distance learning school. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, if you're under 18, you have to have parental permission okay. but, mm -hmm. but we have had uh, uh uh two people under one was 12 and one was eight wrote, both wrote three books uh -huh. <laughs> right? wow. so so um the kids are crazy uh good with the technology now that yeah. i should yeah. turn this ringer off um so that's the easy part for them but yeah. they don't understand marketing and how they could make their right. own way because you know there's no 30 year gold watches anymore. You're lucky if you get a job that lasts for 30 minutes before some big company buys you out, you know, yeah, so yeah. and throws you to the, the curb. Uh, and then you got, uh, excuse me, PhD again, you got PhDs <laughs> and MBAs uh, yeah. competing for jobs at Starbucks. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, I know. So this, and this is true. This is not exaggeration. So, so these people, uh, minimum of six months, it usually takes people six months to a year, but they have a digital and internet marketing skill where they know how yeah. to do email marketing and shopping carts and social media, the, the way that actually makes yeah. money. So yeah. there's a big demand for that because most of the small businesses have are clueless. Yeah. Most of the big companies spend way too much money on this. Yeah. And then you can have their own business. Currently so, we're uh, good. So, so is it, um, do you have sort of, uh, I don't know, curricula or, uh, uh, packages of courses or, a, you know, this, this, for this, you have to take this, 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 for that, you have to take that, no, that. or they we can have just one course, it. one oh, course, oh. because covers all of it. Oh. And, uh, and the thing is, is uh, what I found in, in all the years I've been doing this, teaching this since, you know, 23, 24 years mm -hmm. is that people come and they think they want one thing, right? And even if they learn that one thing, there's a hundred other things they got to know to make that one thing right, work. Right, right. It's and I tell people it's like a jigsaw puzzle, but you don't have the box to see what the whole picture looks like. Right. And I'm the you know, my school was the the box cover, so right. you say, oh, I see how this works and this works and this works. Yeah. But when you said curricula, I, the reason I laughed is because well, you're, we're the only. <laughs> you're the you that snide smile and <laughs> snicker as you say phd i got it <laughs> well no the thing was is that the we change our curriculum sometimes daily uh -huh. no school on earth does this no class uh -huh. on earth does this but i'm not going to teach you something tomorrow that i found out is obsolete now on the uh -huh. internet because that's how fast things change uh -huh. so we have this massive list of changes we've made over the years and you might be on course two and course one has a major change. Well, I, I want you to know about it because uh -huh. I want to give you a quality education and then teach you how to keep up into the future because it changes like crazy. Yeah. So how long is this big, long one course? Uh, you can, the, the minimum you can go through is six months. Most people take six months to a year if they take advantage of all the electives. Ah, yeah. okay. Okay. So how many hours? Well, no. That, well, they they call, they call it 540 ah. clock hours or something right, like that. Right, I don't right. know what the, the educators uh -huh. do. And, but, you know, that's the one thing that's a little bit crazy about this is that it's a distance learning school, yeah. right? Yeah. Not one yeah. student has ever set foot in our office. We had to maintain a physical library full of printed books mm -hmm. and a place for them to look. And not one person is, in 12 years has ever been in the building. <laughs> <laughs> that's, just, that's what drives me crazy about this, this stuff. Yeah. but still uh, we've been uh, we're we stood apart now currently uh we've got this pilot program to again you asked me how i how i help people so we got a pilot program to help persons with disabilities uh -huh. see i've always thought that this is perfect for persons with disabilities because right. not only can they legitimately learn remotely they can legitimately be hired remotely uh-huh 
And so we've got three people. If you want to be inspired, two of them are blind going yeah. through yeah. an internet marketing program. Uh -huh. And uh, so we started a GoFundMe account to get people involved. And, and then I took a grant writing course so that once I prove the concept that I can get these people hired and, and really going, then I'm going to roll it out big to foundations yeah. and corporations. So, so uh, let's say you have this school and it, do you have a count of how many attendees have gone through the oh, course? Probably a couple hundred over 12 years. It's not, it's a boutique school. It's, it's, uh, uh -huh. and it's usually people that know me from my reputation. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's low, uh, you know, low volume, high touch. There's not going to yeah, be yeah. 200 people in a class at once, you know, uh -huh. and it's, it's asynchronous. So you can be, you know, working a full-time job and do it in the middle of the night if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Very and convenient. where can um, people find out about this? Do you have, is yeah. it mentioned on your, on your well, website? Well, it is its own website, the Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia. So it's imtcva.org. Okay. Internet Marketing Training Center, Virginia, VA.org. Okay. Um, but, uh, we can, we can. Uh, yeah, you can write that to me and I'll add it here sure. for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of meat here for a long conversation. <laughs> I didn't even I mean, get warmed up yet. <laughs> I know you didn't even get warmed up, but we did talk about you. <laughs> we did talk about you. And I mean, you're the person, you're the go-to person if people want to know how to make money and how to capitalize on especially speaking events. And um, you know, I, I was smiling when I was reading this because then I said, well, he's coming to speak on my show. I wonder <laughs> what he's expecting from me, <laughs> you know, and um, I, I know what you're saying. I mean, you, you were, you started speaking at events in the days of motivational speaking, you know, when they used to call it that then, and they still do, but it's done differently. Yeah. It's, um, it's different now. Yeah, it's completely different. Um, so, so where's the next mission where's the next thing what's the next um project well the uh i'm so happy with this project i'm on now because uh every day i mean i haven't been on an airplane in two years yeah. i love it because if you look at tv yeah. they're dragging yeah. people off the plane the yeah. police and the fbi's waiting yeah. for them and everybody's screaming yeah. so this is uh, i'm not mandated to do anything but sit here yeah. and help people you know so yeah. so i don't really look too far in advance uh, because uh, I'm just, you know, I couldn't have gotten 45 years under my belt of doing stuff like this. If I, I mean, I could have quit 20 years ago. I yeah. wouldn't be here talking to you if it wasn't yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm yeah, doing yeah. stuff and I got uh, clients going to be waiting and I'm going to be helping them develop their products and their books and everything. So, so uh, that's good enough for me. I, when people say, when are you going to retire? And I'm like, oh, from what? <laughs> Well, from, from what? Us. Yeah, from yeah what? exactly. <laughs> I, I can't wait to tell people about some of the things we, we do that they can do to, it's like, a, I, what I teach is like an insurance policy for your family. Like I mm -hmm. teach people how to keep their, make their hobbies tax deductible, mm. where most people just pay through the nose for their hobbies. And then they feel guilty about it, where yeah. you put up a, a $150 website that's world-class if you knew what you were yeah. doing. Yeah. And, uh, even put an affiliate product up there. Yeah, you've got a business now. Yeah, yeah. Make yeah. a lot of things tax deductible. You know, so yeah. It's, oh, uh, no, it is definitely fascinating. Beats working for a living. But it's fascinating. <laughs> it's fascinating. And um, what's the next book going to be on? Uh, the next. Uh... <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh, He's spellbound. He's not talking. He's thinking still. <laughs> no, I, I I already know what it is. It's, All right. Um, it's called highly educated idiots. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And so I've been collecting all this craziness that's going on of people that should be no better. And they make decisions that are just, I, mean, I, I claim that I could take a farmer from my hometown, any yeah. farmer, yeah. put them in any government job here in the yeah. United yeah. States and they'd make better decisions. I have they got a, common sense. I have two sisters. <laughs> and um, they both said to me, I'm the only one with the PhD. And they said to me, boy, for somebody who studied so much, you're pretty stupid. <laughs> I got that so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm laying off the sauce now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, keep keep that down. I don't want to see you in my book. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Tom, for dropping by and illuminating us. And when, the, when that book comes out, the, the, <laughs> the idiots, I want, I'll have you back. <laughs> so you okay. can talk about why it's not necessary to me. I have two boys, right? <laughs> One is a scientist. He's a, you know, highfalutin artificial intelligence man. <laughs> and another one is completely different. Let's put it that way. Very <laughs> creative. And he's got a way of making money that just, you know, it sounds like he's in your, in your bunch right, of people. Right. And he's, you know, and, and every now and then he pulls his brother up and he says, well, you still working? <laughs> <laughs> this guy told me about a welder the other day, young kids, 24 years old, making a quarter of a million a year. He's an underwater welder. Yeah. And yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah. It's fabulous. That's the kind of stuff my youngest does. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tom. And I hope to have you back. My pleasure. <laughs>